Cyclone Chiniso starting to move south more quickly and other areas of interest on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 28th. So the main feature still stays with Chiniso, uh, but there are a few other areas of interest, all of them at low chances in the next five days, but certainly other things to be looking at. We're down to unclassified on our alert scale, uh, meaning that the threat from Chiniso is mostly over, uh, but there still could be strong winds and heavy rainfall in some places. It's 124 days until Atlantic hurricane season and there are no areas of interest despite that conspicuous looking little system in the eastern Atlantic there that some people are going rather crazy over. But I can assure you it is not expected to become anything. In the southern hemisphere we have a 20% chance now for the southeast Indian Ocean um, over there not far from the Australian region and that could develop in the long range 30% now in the North Indian Ocean where a system could develop as it approaches Sri Lanka. There's also for some reason a 10% system uh, inexplicably in the southern part of the South China Sea headed towards the Malay Peninsula. Whilst it certainly won't form in my view it could be a massive rainmaker for that region. And we have Cyclone Chiniso of course, the still the main feature, although it has seen better days. Uh, it was certainly looked very poor yesterday, uh, but it has looked a lot better recently. It has intensified and it is just short of hurricane equivalent status in the Mozambique Channel. Let's check the latest satellite imagery. First of all, the uh, rainfall estimates in the last 24 hours look around Chiniso area near Madagascar a few red zones but most of it has stayed offshore so that's good news some red zones there also in the uh, Cape York Peninsula region of Australia and bits and bobs around Indonesia here is the latest satellite imagery of Cyclone Chiniso, this covering a 24 hour period showing you how this storm went from almost nothing there 24 hours ago and wrapping back up again in the last few hours. And it certainly got a lot more compact in that time as well. It got, I suppose, too big to sustain itself for a good while, but it's now uh, recovered. It's blowing up massive banks of convection, particularly on the western side. Here's a look at some RAM imagery to show how deep that convection is, well into the minus 80s at times. And you can still see a little bit of an eye trying to reform there as well, but it is struggling. It is a typical look for a system that is hovering around hurricane equivalent status, 70 mile per hour winds that's around 110 kilometers per hour sustain and here is from uh, slider some more imagery here and a wide shot showing the storm's full influence some of it still along the coast of Madagascar but the worst is definitely behind us and we could still see though potentially a hundred millimeters of rainfall in some locations in the next few days Look at sea surface temperatures around the world. You're looking for temperatures of 79 degrees or higher. That's 26 Celsius. That's the threshold usually accepted as being the threshold for tropical cyclone development. The Atlantic looking borderline in the Caribbean and uh, looking towards the North Indian Ocean. Not much going on here either, at least in the Arabian Sea. Down to the Southwest Indian Ocean. Look at those temperatures though, much higher, particularly in the Mozambique Channel, which is where Chinizo was, where temperatures are at least 28 Celsius, where it is right now though, around 27. Out at sea, temperatures are around 27 to 28 as well. Some spots of 29 near the tip of Madagascar. In the North Indian Ocean, where that other system is, keep watching that, 28 degrees in the lower latitudes, decreasing slightly. Along the coast of Australia, very warm and favourable, temperatures near 29 degrees across the whole northerly coast, right through to the east coast of Queensland, where temperatures start to drop with the higher latitude. But still 29 degrees out over the Coral Sea, and temperatures of 28 to 29 in the Fiji region. And in the Western Pacific, temperatures looking good as well. 28 degrees plus in the main region into the Philippine Sea, south of Guam. Uh, temperatures there 27 and a little bit cooler in the South China Sea where temperatures are around 26. 
Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this, and you'll note that the Western Pacific is above average, the South Indian Ocean is around average overall, and the Australian region around about the same. Still a bit of a cool pool near the Australian top end, but it hasn't stopped temperatures getting to 28 to 29 Celsius. The La Nina effect is still there. Long-range forecasts are suggesting that it will be replaced with an El Nino later on in the year, but it has still hold, held firm just a little bit in the last month or so. Oceanic heat content very good in the low latitudes of the Southern Hemisphere, in the South Pacific at least. The Solomon Islands getting the best of it, and in the Western Pacific it's actually expanding a little bit more south of Guam. A decent pool there of orange, uh, where there's decent amounts of oceanic heat content that could really boost a tropical cyclone if we saw anything that formed early there. Let's check the GFS computer models and we've got quite a bit to show you tonight. In the next five days it is showing a potential system near the Hawaiian Islands and there it is becoming probably a nameable storm. The only problem with this theory is that none of the other computer models are showing this and that's why we've not marked it on any of our charts. But Hone fans, this could be your little glimmer of hope for the next five days. GFS certainly confident on that but I wouldn't pay it much notice. Looking across the uh, Malay Peninsula region, you can see all of that uh, wind moving inland over Malaysia and a little bit of rotation further south. But look into the North Indian Ocean, you can see that system, a bit of rotation moving into Sri Lanka on day four and day five, uh, but nothing really uh, gets very strong. You can see there briefly, it might get close to tropical storm force winds and then weakens again. 30% chance on it, it could become a depression, don't forget those percentage chances include depression as well as storm. And this is Chinizo's future, there it is near hurricane equivalent status, so it holds its intensity for quite a while, continues southeastwards, might reach 75 miles per hour again before it turns post tropical and then uh, scurries off well towards the southeast. There's another system up there towards the top right. That's the 20% system that we've marked in the South Indian Ocean. There it is up there doing a little bit of rotating near the top right and that may have a chance in the longer range. Tonight's uh, precipitation chart focuses on Malaysia and Singapore because they are expecting enormous amounts of rainfall from this invest whether it becomes a tropical cyclone or not, which is really stacked against it, uh, the southern part of the Malay Peninsula really getting a lot of rainfall there. Those pink areas, that's getting up to around 20 inches or more. There it is in Singapore, 17 inches in the next seven days, and most of that is in four days, really. And out at sea, just off the coast there, 34 inches of rain. Just to put those in millimetres, 16, mil 16 inches, that's uh, 400 millimetres. And if it got to 36 inches, which is saying off the coast only, that is 900 millimetres of rainfall. But we're certainly looking at possibly 400 or 500 inland along the eastern coast from Singapore northwards towards Kuantan. Let's check the longer range for the GFS, day 5 through 10. And it's the Australian region that gets a little bit of activity here. Two cyclones forming, one of them being that 20% chance on the left, and then a third one forming out of almost nothing there. So it's really becoming uh, chugging them out there in that 10-day uh, period. The second one gets caught up, or the middle one I should say, gets caught up in between those two other cyclones there and doesn't last very long. The one on the right-hand side is the strongest, becoming a Category 1 there on the Sapphire Simpson scale and the one on the left hand side dies off as well actually. And this is the South Pacific near Fiji, between Fiji and Vanuatu. In comes a significant cyclone according to the GFS that becomes a substantial hurricane equivalent storm. A lot of them do form in that gap, so certainly something that can't be ruled out given the time of year. Obviously we're not far from the peak of cyclone season and it does become a significant cyclone there. So something to watch, although it does miss land and, uh, ultimately and it is a small system. That's the important stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode and you can find all of our usual items and our full season and individual animations there on request. Our animation team are waiting and we're also waiting for Hone and we've still got t-shirts to remind everyone of that fact. 
In the super long range then, day 10 to 16, you can see what happens here with this merry-go-round of cyclonic activity really near Australia. Nothing really goes on to affect land, it's just a big soup of systems and a slew of uh, tracks that move along there. That second system uh, that originally is the 20% chance, it does make a go of it, becomes a tropical cyclone for a brief period, then moves into the gap uh, behind that other storm, it's hard to explain, and both of them eventually move back out west and out to sea, so no real land impacts from all of that. There's that strong cyclone, category 4 there at peak by the looks of things, and it shoots down towards New Zealand, uh, turns post-tropical along the way, ends up missing, passing well to the east, there it is, post-tropical, strong post-tropical TC, large hurricane force wind field there, uh, but certainly something to watch out for, because of course tracks and forecasts can change, especially given this is a long way out if it does form at all the track forecast may on may end up being different there it is continuing down towards antarctica with very strong winds you can talk about that and anything else in the world of tropics and around the wide world of weather as a whole on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for all kinds of weather chat well, what happened on this day in 2000, January 28th, we had Cyclone Connie, which was to the north of Mauritius and was peaking uh, on this day. I think it was near the end of the day, if I remember rightly, uh, as a Category 4 storm. It looked very decent on satellite imagery, a rather small system. Uh, the eye probably fits inside Mauritius there. Uh, we also had Cyclone Kiralee, which would become a Category 1 later in the day off the coast of Australia, and the remnants of Joe, which were moving off in the South Pacific very quickly at this point to the southeast. Back to this year, and we've got no new storms properly on the horizon yet, but the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Arlene in the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and in the Central Pacific, it's still Hone for the fourth year running. In the Western Pacific, next up is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Mocha. We're still at five storms for the year so far. The average per year is 92, last year finished out with 93. And in the Southern Hemisphere, next stop in the Australian region, we're still waiting for Freddie. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Dingani, and in the South Pacific, Judy. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>